Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be the review for Physics C for Momentum. Uh, first thing uh, in Momentum, it's a good idea to try to conserve momentum in collisions. For the most part, momentum is conserved in all collisions as long as there is no net external force. And it would be a very rare occasion where they would give you one where it would be not conserved. You need to know the difference between elastic and inelastic. Elastic collisions are ones that conserve both energy and momentum. These are very rare, but not as rare as you would think in physics problems, because if it is an elastic collision, you're saying that you're not generating any heat, you're not generating any distortion of the object, you're not generating any sound. If it's inelastic, it's losing some energy. So most collisions in real life, we would say, would be inelastic. Uh, you should recognize what it's going to look like when you have a momentum problem. So things with the spring that are being compressed together, people pushing apart from each other are all good examples of this. Momentum is lowercase p. It is equal to the mass times the velocity. Things that are a little bit different between what we've covered so far is center of mass, which we'll look at as a separate topic all onto its own in deriving the center of mass of things. Uh, <clears throat> force can be expressed as the derivative of momentum. And impulse is going to be equal to the integral of the F, the force with respect to time. So <clears throat> impulse can be I, and we're saying that this is the integral of F with respect to time. Remember, impulse is our change in momentum. And so we already had that work was the integral of force with respect to position. So we're getting those. Uh, center of mass is given as m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus dot, dot, dot over m1 plus m2. Uh, we can think about the velocity of the center of mass by taking the derivative of this with respect to time. So the velocity of x center of mass is going to be m1v1 plus m2v2 plus over the sum of the masses. And then our acceleration would be the derivative of this. And so you can rewrite our center of mass for mass times acceleration as well. In two dimensions, you would consider what the X is and what the Y is. And I'll do a couple examples for you guys. All right, so uh, for this one, I'm gonna consider the X first. So this is going to be our first position. This one has a position of 0.5 and has a mass of three. Let me put it in units. So I'm modeling proper behavior. So it's 0.5 meters, 3 kilograms, plus the second one is 4 kilograms at 2 meters. And the third one is 3 kilograms at 3.5 meters. And then this would be over the total mass. So the X center of mass is going to be 1.5 plus 8 is 9.5 plus 11.5 is 20 divided by 10 or 2. 
I should put that in the calculator, huh? So our X and our mass is located at two meters. For the Y one, we'll do the same thing. So our first one is 2.5 meters and three kilograms. Our second one is 2.5 meters and three kilograms. And our last one is 0.5 meters and four kilograms. Obviously, if it's multiple choice, you don't need to worry about units. If you are doing a free response, though, uh, you have to have units in your substitution. So we have 2.5 times 3 plus 2.5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 2 is 17. Divided by 10 will be 1.7. So our center of mass for this system would be located at 2 comma 1.7. 2 comma 1.7. If you have a continuous object, you could cons consider individual pieces and where the center of mass of each of them would be. which these points are the same as these points, right? So they took this U piece and broke it in. We're saying all the mass is there, all the mass is there, all the mass is there. Usually what they do is give you a piece of wire, a bent piece of wire is our typical one, which is what this one is. So I think on the review multiple choice, you have one that's a little more complicated. All right, so I'm going to break this into, and you can see this distance and this distance are supposed to be the same. I'm going to say for this part of the wire, the center of mass is there. For this part of the wire, the center of mass is there. For this part of the wire, the center of mass is there. And I only care about the Y because all of our choices share the same X. I'm going to make uh, this have a mass of M because it's going to cancel out anyways. And so I would say that uh, this would be 0, comma L over 2. And so my Y center of mass is going to be M, L over 2 for that one. This one would be L over 2, comma 0. So it's going to be M times 0 for its Y. It's not up at all. This one is going to be L comma L over 2. And so that's going to be M L over 2. And then even though this one doesn't contribute anything to uh, the Y, it cancels out. We do still have to take into account its mass. So I have uh, <clears throat> on the top, I'm going to have ML. On the bottom, I have 3M. So I'm going to have... Uh, L over 3. And so looking at what we have, this is a quarter, this is a half, and B would be between a quarter and a half choices. All right, a force is given by the following function, f of t equals 6t plus 9. What is the impulse on the object if its momentum is 0 at time t equals 0? So I'm going to say that my impulse is the integral of f t dt. And there aren't a lot of examples of them asking you to use calculus to solve these problems. So that's why I had to make up my own. Uh, so my formula is... 6t plus 9 dt. So this is going to be 3t squared plus 9t plus c is going to be equal to our impulse. 
And then if this is zero at zero, the C is going to go away. So the function of impulse with respect to time would be 3T squared plus 9T. Uh, the momentum of an object is given by the following function. Uh, P equals AT cubed. What is the force associated with it? So F is going to be equal to dp dt. And so I'm going to have the derivative of at cubed with respect to t. And so this should be 3at squared. 